Today we'll continue talking about the logic language, which is a declarative programming language, where we state what we want to be computed, and it's up to the interpreter to figure out how to compute it for us. Now to me this is one of those things where you can understand all the details of how it's built, you can even build it yourself, and you can still be amazed by its output. It's really cool. And what we're going to do now is we're going to combine the power of the logic language with another good idea from this course, which is recursive lists and how they're constructed from the first element and the rest of the list. So syntax is very important in this case. Let's quickly review what I mean by a recursive list. We're still using scheme style expressions in order to write our logic language. So underneath we're still running the scheme reader, which takes in some expression and prints it out as a scheme expression and a Python expression. So numbers are the same, but uh, if you create a pair, in scheme it's written as 1.2, in Python it's written pair 1.2. And a list of length 1 is written this way in scheme, but it's really a pair where the rest of the list is nil. So we have a first element and the rest of the list. A length two list is a nested set of pairs, which is written in this way, but really underneath you should think of it as a first element and then the list two, which we can also construct by writing down the first element dot and then the rest of the list two, which looks the same in scheme as just one space two and has exactly the same structure in Python. Okay, so back to the logic language. We can state facts about lists. Remember that expressions begin with query or fact, followed by some relations. And expressions and their relations are just scheme lists. So let's define a new relation. That's always going to start with this symbol append to form. And then it will be followed by three different lists. And this one says, if I append the empty list and the other list, then I'll get that other list. So these two are related in that if you append this one to that one, you'll get the third. Now we can also give, uh, oh, so this is a simple fact. We just state a conclusion. But we can also state complex facts, which have both a conclusion and a hypothesis. And what this fact says is that if we can satisfy the hypothesis, then we can conclude the conclusion. So we have to prove this, and then we know this. And let's read this out. So this says, I can append a dot r and y to form a dot z, just as long as it's the case that I can append r and y to form z. Okay, this is a recursive compound fact because we have append the form, defined in terms of append the form. The simple fact up here is the base case. And what this allows me to do is issue queries Let's say things like, what can I append to CD in order to construct the list E, B, C, D? And it's the job of the logic interpreter to say there is a way to do this, just so long as left is E, B. So if you append E, B, and C, D, then you get the list E, B, C, D. So these are three things in a relation together. And remember that in effect, the first relation is the conclusion. The rest are hypotheses. So you build up the conclusion from the hypotheses. Whereas in a query, in this case, we have only one relation. But if we had a bunch of relations, they'd all have to be true at the same time. OK, so we have a full program here in the logic language. We have a query. What's going on with this query? Well, the interpreter's job is to take in the query and then list all the bindings of variables, those are the things that start with question mark, to values that it can find to satisfy the query. So this says, what's the left that can append with CD to create EBCD? And the answer is EB. And to figure this out, it had to construct facts that say, well, I can append nothing and CD in order to get CD. So this is just a schematic representation of a relation append to form empty list cd cd, which is a simple fact. 
So that would be x and that would be x in our simple fact. We also need to conclude that if you append b and cd, then you get bcd, and ebcd gives you ebcd. And how does this relate to the fact that we stated? Well, this is really just this. Okay, so what have I done? I've broken up eb into its first element and then the rest of the list, which is just b. And likewise, I've broken up ebcd into its first element and then the rest of that list. And all of these have variable names. So that's a and that's r. And this whole thing is a dot r, which we see as part of the conclusion of this fact. And there's y, there's a again, there's z, and there's a dot z, which is also a conclusion to this fact. Now, in order to conclude the conclusion, we need to have already proven the hypothesis, which we have here. There's r again, there's y, and there's z. So if we know this, then we know this. And likewise, if we knew this, then we'd know that. And so we can conclude that eb is the thing to fill in to left in order to get this whole piece. Let's do some more demos, just so we make sure we understand this. Here's append to form as we've defined it. And let's issue some other queries. So well, the first one would be, what do you get when you append A and B and C, D, E? That should give us some result. And if we run that query, it will tell us success. A, B, C, D, E is the result. But the power of the logic language is that we can run it in both directions. We can't just append things, we can break things apart as well using the same relation. So if instead of, we'll just comment that out, instead of having A, B, C, D, E, we can say, what is the left and the right that you put together in order to get A, B, C, D, E? And this will tell us success. Here are all the different ways of appending a left list and a right list in order to get the full list that we're looking for. A, B, C, D, E, we can get by A, B, C, and D, E, etc. So each one of these lines is an assignment that satisfies the query we're looking for. Now, with a recursive fact like this, we can put it together into other facts. So we'll get rid of these and we'll define append three, which is a new kind of relation that takes uh, three different things, x, y, and z, and puts them together into x, y, z. Now, when is this gonna be true? Well, it has to be the case that you can append x and y to form some x, y, and you can append that x, y, and z in order to get the x, y, z that we want to construct. Okay, so if we want to append three things, and these things all have to be lists, but they don't necessarily have to be lists of the same kind of thing. So we could append a and b, and one and two, and x and y, and what do we get? Let's run it and find out. It found that there is a way to fill in s if you fill it with a a, B, 1, 2, X, Y, then append 3 is a relation that holds true. So that means that we've appended X, Y, and Z together to form X, Y, Z. And we can run it in the other direction as well. So what are all the X, Y, Z's that I can use to form A, B, C, D, E? And the logic interpreter will just go through and list them all for me, of which there are many. So I could have nothing, nothing, and the whole list, and that will append together to give me the whole list. Or down here, we can have things like A, B, C, and D. So with just a few lines of code, we can enumerate lots of different possibilities in a totally generic manner. We've done two things, we've done three things. Could we do arbitrarily many things? Well, sure we can just have more recursive facts, defined in terms of recursive facts. So here's a fact that I can segment some whole into parts. Now, how's this gonna work? I wanna be able to say things like, this is just a comment here, by the way. 
I want to be able to say things like I can segment one, two, three, four, five into one, two, and then three, and then four, five or break it up into however many sublists I want. Now the base case here is that I could segment one, two, three, four, five into just one sublist, one, two, three, four, five. So let's actually state that fact first. I can segment the whole into the whole. Okay, now we haven't finished stating the recursive fact. This says I can segment a whole into any number of parts I want. But actually what I really need is the first part and then the rest of the parts. Because what I'm going to say is that it's possible to segment the whole into this first part and then the rest of the parts if it's the case that it's possible to append this first segment and some combined version of the rest into the whole list that I'm looking for where, by the way, it's the case that this combined form is combined from all the elements in the rest. So what have I defined here? Well, I've defined a way to segment things where, for instance, if I want to segment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into two pieces, part 0 and part 1, then Logic will do it for me. And we'll say part zero could be empty and part one could be the whole thing. So this is a generalization of just the individual append to form that we created before. But this is even more powerful because I can go in here and just say, give me as many parts as you want. And then I'll run this query. Oh my goodness, what happened? Well, I'm gonna stop it because it will go forever. It's telling me that the one way to up make one, two, three, four, five out of parts is to have a few empty lists and then a one, two, and then a three, and then another empty list, and then four, five, and then some more empty lists. Wow, that's true, but it's not very useful. Maybe we can get rid of all these empty lists. Well, one way to do that is to redefine append to form so that you can only append two lists that actually have some contents. Think about how to do that for a minute. It turns out that all we have to do is change the base case. We can say, instead of appending an empty list to x to get x, you have to append a list of length 1. And you have to append it to a list that has at least one element, at which point what you get is a list with at least two elements, a and b, followed by r. OK, so this specialization of append to form says I need to have two lists that at least have something in them, and then I can build up a list of length two. And the recursion holds exactly as it did before, we just have a different base case. Now when we ask, what are all the ways of building up one, two, three, four, five out of parts, the same query that we had before, it will enumerate all the ones that aren't empty. So we have one, two, three, four, and five, all as individual lists. We have one big list, and we have everything in between.